myself out. I am afraid of this. I'm terrified and paralyzed by. I am deathly afraid of. Welcome to the Sum of All Fears podcast with your host, me, Ryan Perio. Hello and welcome to the Sum of All Fears podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Perio. This week, my guest is Alan Carrier, a fitness and wellness coach out of Canada. He has developed Nutra Journey, which is a fantastic holistic approach to fitness and wellness. He's an amazing human being. We had a great conversation. In this episode, we talk about nutrition, fitness, his journey, and then we get into his fear of body image. So let's get into that interview right now with Alan Carrier. All right. My guest this week is nutritionist and wellness coach Alan Carrier out of Canada. Like where in Canada are you exactly? Hey, everyone. I'm from Ontario, Canada right now. Um, I live in Wasaga Beach and then we're talking about potentially moving um, the Golden Horseshoe sometimes this year as well. So around like uh, Hamilton area. That's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. So you're a nutritionist and wellness coach. Where where does your passion for nutrition and wellness come from? Um, so I feel like it started um in my like younger days. When I was like a teenager, I struggled with really bad insomnia <laughs> to the point like I would probably sleep maybe like four or five hours a week. Uh, I would constantly look up online about different modalities, about like holistic wellness stuff, about mental health, and about nutrition, um, about whatever I thought was really interesting. And then I just like constantly read stuff online and educating myself about it. And then I remember telling my mom that I wanted to go to college to become like a mental health um, and addiction worker because I felt the whole concept of mental health and addiction was like super fascinating. But then the only issue was like the school I wanted to go to was in North Bay, which is at least like six hours away. And then I felt like, oh, like, I don't know if I could move that far away from home. I didn't know how to cook. I didn't know how to take care of myself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so eventually I was 10 18, moved up by myself. Um, I went to school to become a fashion designer because I thought that's what I want to do. I want to make clothes. I thought it was creative. I thought it was cool to realize like, how toxic it was like how terrible the industry was i'm just like yeah i don't know if i could do this and at the same time like i i couldn't sew i could barely draw so i just like some designer i'm gonna be right <laughs> so then um later on like my friend and like that's when i live in ottawa so my friend decided like hey let's move up north together because ottawa sucks and i'm like totally does so we just packed our shit and we left moved to sioux st marie which is like, like 12 hours from ottawa it's like between mm -hmm. thunder bay and Sudbury. um if you look at a map it's pretty it's pretty isolated it was a huge culture shock and i'm just like you know this is so new this is so weird and i'm like i don't know if i like this it's like this whole fear because it's like the unknown right um, so when I moved there, I decided to go back to school to study social service worker, which I thought was pretty fascinating because it kind of goes with like, you know, my passion for mental health and addiction and to help people's wellness and to make it feel better. Then I basically decided, like, hey, I should go to North Bay because I wanted to do my 16 for mental health and addiction. Um, then I moved to university, so further down south, closer to Barrie. Went to university, um, that's where like my health wellness kicked in like to the most because then it's like I saw my partner and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna quit smoking because I'm sick and tired of it. I'm sick and tired of spending money and feeling like shit almost every day from smoking like a pack of cigarettes a day. He was supportive. He's just like, yeah, I do what you want to do. Um, so then I quit smoking. And then of course, like the fear of like weight gain was gonna come in, right? Like I was pretty pretty lean like I was pretty skinny before like I was extra small shirt man I was size like 20 pants um uh, so then everyone kept telling me like oh when you could smoke you're gonna gain weight I was just like yeah yeah like I never had to worry about that before <laughs> I just do ate whatever I wanted and never had to worry about it um so then I just like my first step was just like I should learn how to cook Maybe if I learn how to cook, I can make something healthy and I don't have to the fear of like gaining that weight, right? I'm not going to fear of like my body image is not going to change that much. Needless to say, that didn't happen, but. 
I like how that you threw the humble brag over in size 28 when I'm over here, we're in size 33, 34. It's like, okay, I see that. I hear, I see what you're throwing down. Like I, right? but as a man, it is like you, you totally lose track of your size. Cause you just, when you grow as a young adult, you're like, these are my sizes. And that when you go to the clothing store, this, yeah, I'm a medium and you don't realize you've grown in ways you're not proud of. Yeah. And, and I'm like, I'm where I, you know, I just never realized I grew into a large or that my body type, my shoulders wise and everything else just didn't fit what, you know, I thought I did when I was younger. I was like, oh, yeah, that's not what I usually wear, but I guess that's what we're wearing now, you know, and just, <laughs> it's amazing. Like in, in, since you did dabble in fashion design, you know, you kind of have that too. It's like, Hey, you know, yes. Cause men, you know, don't, you know, you men aren't known as avid clothing shoppers or knowing like their sizes, like a woman no. is a woman goes into the store, knows her size, but also still tries on the outfit to make sure that it flatters. And you know, it, Men don't do that. Men are like, I'm a large. There's a large. Yeah. <laughs> we're gone. <laughs> but I would just like, you just got this shirt. Like, oh yeah, that fits. That's my size. Right? But I'm trying to thing on. <laughs> yeah. And so that's, and I feel like, you know, your little dabble and in, dalliance into fashion design helps you because you can kind of educate men that way too. Of like, hey, don't just, don't just look at the tag. Look in the mirror. Yeah. Like, put it on. Yeah. Look in the mirror. Because, you know, even though it says it's a large, if they're if they're using European measurements, which is centimeters and meters versus American, yeah. which is inches, it's, it makes a difference. Oh, yeah, it totally does. I learned that the hard way buying jeans on eBay. I was like, oh, I can wear a 32. And they were like 32 centimeters. It's like, this is this is hilariously skinny. This fits my leg. <laughs> like I'm like, what starving child? Like even a starving child would have to suck in to to put these pants on. Like they would, <laughs> they were that type. It's like no one is this skinny. Like bio <laughs> biology skeletons would be like, woo, this is gonna be a little bit of work. <laughs> but that's oh man. But yeah, so that's awesome. What do you think? Like mm -hmm. you talk about your like your your fascination with the mental health. What where where do you think that comes from? Like where do you think your obsession from with mental health comes from? I think it's just a lot of like psychology aspects, right? Like studying the human behavior, studying the mind, and then like a lot of mental people struggles with mental health, and it's a huge stigma nowadays. Like come on, people are like we're in twenty twenty two. There's nothing to be ashamed about if you have anxiety, or depression, or if you're bipolar, right? And I think that was like part of it too, because like I was so convinced. I'm like, I must be bipolar because I can't sleep. My mood would fluctuate. I mean, I was a teenager, right? Mm -hmm. It would fluctuate all the time. And it's just fun because like I went from happy to sad and depressed to like I would scream at the world and punch someone in the face yeah. within like in five minutes, realizing like, you know, like, oh, I must be bipolar. But it's just like, no, I just probably some hormonal teenager, right? Everyone goes through that phase. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just me. I'm bipolar. <laughs> I think they're just varying degrees. Like nobody, it's just like just because everybody looks good, you know, everything looks healthy on the outside doesn't mean yeah. that there's not some of the wiring isn't bad. Yeah, yeah. And it's that, exactly there's a lot that makes up a human being and it's in there's not a there's not a normal. It is just a sliding scale of of mental and physical, you know, just p strengths and weaknesses. It's your your genetic code kind of tells you if you're genetically predisposed to what you're doing. Yeah. And, and as I've talked about on previous episodes, like I've. I'm a huge advocate for like they need to I feel like they need to revamp like middle school up to have like a psychology class and mm -hmm. and not just and not a home ec class, but a nutrition class like home ec. I had home ec when I was a cadet. I'm showing my age of like we had home ec where you actually, you know, like studied to be a housewife. Basically, you had a class where you cooked, you baked a pie, you made you had you pretended to have kids, you you did all these things that is so 50s and 60s like as oh like I you walk into a class it was like I love Lucy you had like like these little dining room like faux dining rooms like in the class and you just everybody got like a little kitchen lab and we just pretended to we played house for about an hour and I was like 
times have changed, but there are things that I feel like it it drives me crazy that they don't have a basic rudimentary psychology because of the bullying and everything that the just the just mm. just the rough you know early onset of socializing and social circles that goes with you know late elementary and early middle school where you just everybody's stepping on each other to be the the golden child the one at the top that everybody likes the popular one mm-hmm. and i feel like if you had a basic social dynamics class that taught like okay this is what you know just basically respectable i would say respectful competition don't be not arrogance but just respectful you know respectful confidence you know there's to be proud of yourself but not so proud of yourself that you have to put someone else down and i think yeah. that, that would be it would just go a long way because there's so many things that just by pointing out kids differences at such an early age you already start that fear and anxiety of going to school and it, your world is you know a class of 300 people and then it grows to like maybe a thousand when you get to high school and then your damage is done because then you realize you know 10 20 50 years later that the world is a million people but you let 300 people set up your behaviors for the rest of your life yep it's like basically like you know i guess it's gonna age us it's like listening to guns and roses you know what i mean welcome to the jungle it's yeah. all about fun and games you gotta yeah. survive somehow and then you know like people that do survive high school like you said it's like the popular kids if you're like below like below the popular kids you're a nobody right and yeah. then you're like oh my god i'm so socially awkward oh my god like i like this girl this guy yeah i should approach them you say hi and they like don't say hi back to you you're like or draw back into a shell, right? You're just yeah. like, oh my god, I don't want to exist anymore. <laughs> well, that, or that, or they just publicly humiliate you for your differences. Like, you know, they just yeah. You now it's they now they the kids use things like what's your pronoun because that's the new thing of you know. Or as adults, we try to be respectful of like, hey, it isn't what it's what we it's what we want to be. Like, so it doesn't matter what we are; it's what we wish to be. Why can't? Why is it so? Why is it so difficult to? just let us be who we want to be versus no instead yeah. i don't understand I, you know we did that when we were kids playing house like there's so many people that you know played like they were the mom or the dad and just because they weren't girl or boys we still played the game it wasn't we didn't sit there and think no you're a boy you can't be a mom you know that some that somewhere down the line that got you know pushed in because you watch kindergartners play and stuff house and stuff like that they just assign roles and just you know play their interpretation of that role yeah yeah and there's a whole like gender construct right as soon as you're a male like oh you have to be the dad i'm gonna be the mom because i'm a girl it's like okay well doesn't really work that way nowadays (laughs) it is and it's and i but i just don't get the pushback you know it yeah. Is it just that you're afraid that they're going to be happier than you? Is that like the you because you're unhappy with what you've what you've built that you just don't want someone else to build something better than you? Yeah. Yeah. And again, survival competition, right? Survival of the strongest. And then also teach nutrition. I feel like I don't know if you feel like this as a nutritionist that they're, you know, that diet could go goes a long way into I guess mental Sugar, yeah, sugar, soda, everything else is, you know, at that young of an age, informative is probably not good. I, I don't know how 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 well do you like nutrition wise? Do how much do you think that that could change is a game changer? Like, um, I find like nutrition like changes like oh my god, like this oh every year does something new, which is I I mean I like the learning aspect of it because it's like it gets me excited, but like. Back in the 90s, coconut oil was deemed like the worst thing ever, right? It was like, it was so bad for you. And then 2000 was like, oh, eggs increases your cholesterol. You should have only egg whites. Um, and then I think 2010, I forgot, forgot what it was. 2010, I think it's like gluten-free stuff. Like, all like, it was had to be gluten-free. It was gluten-tolerant. And it was celiac. And now it's like, oh, keto, right? Like, carbs are terrible for you. 
you too many carbs. Carbs are the worst. And I feel like nutrition changes so much. Like every year there's something new. I mean, like to me, I find it just, it, all it does, it feeds into the fear of like, you know, the um, uh, aphanorexia, right? When people are obsessed about eating healthy, that's all they can eat. If they eat anything that's deemed unhealthy or quotes, right? They have this like, anxiety and they feel like shit. And then some people may trigger like eating disorders, like to the point that they become bulimic because they ate like a piece of chocolate and it's like, yeah. oh my God, I ate sugar. I ate carbs. I'm terrible. Yeah. I don't, I also don't understand that either. It's like food is meant to be, you know, yes, it's sustenance, but it's also meant to be enjoyed. If you don't enjoy yeah. the food, then why, you know, why are you, why are you eating it you know like it's yeah you, you also want a happy life you don't want to dread dinner you know you don't want to <laughs> oh we, exactly and then and and then to just basically you know feel that way about everyone else's food you know like you look at food and people with vegetarian stuff that uh, they're anti-meat and it's like i get it you can be anti-meat but i don't know if they will you know, follow suit just because you gave them that information. Yeah. 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 That was a couple of years ago. The whole big plant based vegan craze came out too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But like, like you said too, like I find like my, I guess that's part of my beliefs. Like some of you may relate to this as well, mm -hmm. but to me, like your mind, body and spirit. So you're like, you know, how you see yourself in your mind and your, your physical aspect, it's all interconnected. Yeah. So like in the future, like a goal of mine is to combine like mental health services with nutrition, because it's like, for example, if you think of someone who has struggles with body image, like myself, right, mm -hmm. for the longest time, and then I quit smoking and I gained all that weight, like obviously that triggered a lot of anxiety, like yeah. to the point, like, you know, I had a fear to get my shirt off in public. Or I got super anxious, like to a point I feel like almost like a panic attack. So I'm like refused to ever go mm -hmm. to the beach. And if I did, I had my shirt on and people are looking at me weird. I'm just like, you know, holding myself. I'm like, don't look at me. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, and then like eventually, like basically I feel like that affected my relationship, like between mm -hmm. my partner and I, like everyone trying to get into me. I was just like, yeah, the light has to be turned off or else I will not take my shirt off. Yeah. I, and they can always say, you know, they can always say how they feel so many times. And you, if you blow yeah. it off, that's that's the hard part of relationships. We have, you know, I issues with with your perception, it, whether it be yeah. mental, you know, like, I don't know how you how you attract you, how you find me attractive or how you how you can love me when I, you know, I, you know, just and they love you for you. And they can always say that so many times. And, you know, they can't it's they're not there to convince you. They they tell you how they feel it. But they can't just constantly like no, you know they they wish they could. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's like this way you gotta work on your mindset, right? Like yeah. believe them, believe in yourself, work on yourself, practice like things that makes you feel good. But that's what that I, you're not harming yourself. That's what makes me think what you're doing is so special, though, is because you're so mm -hmm. like passionate about mental health as well. That you can also kind of also emotionally support somebody while they're going through that weight loss journey because it can get frustrating to look in the mirror and not see the progress. You know, you, you it's hard to it's hard to it's hard to watch baby steps. Yeah, yeah. And I find some people too, like some of the clients I had felt guilty because they miss a workout day or like, oh my God, I cheated and I had pizza last night and going tonight for dinner with some friends and we're going for the chicken wings and pitchers of beer. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I send them to text, like I sigh, not because I'm like unhappy with what they texted me. I just sigh. I'm like, again, like reminder, this is like my mantra. I tell everyone it's like um, progress over perfection, right? Like, mm -hmm. yeah. You had chicken wings. You go for chicken wings and beer. Yeah, you're gonna have pizza. Yeah, you're gonna scale maybe on Sunday. You're not see the scale moving, but you know what? Like it's a progress, right? It's not a race. Yeah, it's a journey. Yeah, and that's why I tell people too. Like especially in comedy, is something I as something I do is like it's not a sprint or a marathon. It's a journey. That there's no there's no expected finish line where we all finish at the same place. Everybody's everybody's got a different path to walk. You can't look at someone else's path and wonder why their path is so straightforward and fast when yours is seems to be this long, arduous, winding journey. You've just got to, you got to enjoy what you're doing. And 
you yeah. know, there is there are delicious, healthy alternatives to stuff. And it's it's interesting. Sometimes you'll find some you like. Sometimes you'll be like, mm, you know, like, who that we'll, we'll never do that again. You know, because <laughs> cauliflower is not is my girlfriend loves cauliflower. I could pass on it. And like people make cauliflower pizza dough and stuff. And I'm like, I just don't you know, it's like it's just like pizza. It's no, it's not you. <laughs> I admire that your your yeah. mental strength to to believe to be able to believe that you your imagination is stronger than mine. Like I don't you you definitely played make believe very well, but I <laughs> you know I I understand it and like you, if you enjoy it that's great and you know that's the main thing about it is is to is to not eat in a in a bad mental place because that's where you're not doing it for sustenance or enjoyment, you're doing it to either, you know, satisfy a feeling that you had, mm -hmm. or you're just doing it to, you know, in a, in a negative thing in a negative space. And you don't want, that's when you don't want to, you know, eat or, you know, satisfy an addiction is to, is to do it when you're in a spot where you're not maybe in control. Yeah. Yeah. So when you, when you gained weight from your cigarettes and you, your body image, how did you, how did you first, like, how did you cope with that? Like, how did you, I guess, start to turn the corner on, on that for yourself? Like, how did you, what were your, like, I guess, early, you know, that progress signs that kind of help motivate you to keep going? Um, at first it was just like, like I said too, I don't know how to because I was just like, I survive on frozen pizzas, frozen um, sweet potato fries, and as well as like frozen like tofu nugget. Because I'm also vegetarian. Mm -hmm. um, I don't preach it in my practice. Because to me, it's just like I stopped eating meat when I was 16 because of the textures. There's a lot of texture yeah. issues I did not enjoy, so mm -hmm. I just like I could not do it. And finally, probably again, like you know, like I said, step on my educating myself, educating myself about factory farming, and I'm just like, oh my god, this is terrible. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then so basically, so like you know, quit smoking was like the very first step I wanted to take, and not to that, like, um, like I said earlier, I went from like a small shirt to a like a slowly to a medium to a large, because I remember going shopping, and I just like tried to, I'm like, oh yeah, I bought this shirt because I'm like, oh yeah, it's, it's gonna fit, right? It always fits before. I came home and I realized like it did not fit. And then I always wash stuff before I wear it because I'm just like, I don't know who wore this before. I don't know how long it's been on the shelf. Like, you know what I mean? Like, just yeah. weird things. Um, and I'm like, oh, I must have shook in the dryer. And when this keeps happening and happening, so I keep donating clothes to shelters because it wouldn't fit me. And my partner's just like, I don't think it's the clothes. I think it's you. And then that caused a huge fight. I'm like, what do you mean it's me? <laughs> <laughs> and he just tried to be nice about it and yeah. tried to be sincere, right? And then I just like got super upset, and then yeah. I just like told him off, and I'm just like, you know, like fuck this, fuck this relationship. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that the, that's how how it is. It's a, that first, it's you don't you know because it's kind of quasi embarrassing too. Like people don't realize yeah. that that that's just quasi embarrassment that it you know that you don't that's a, that's a truth you don't want to face right now. And it's, yeah. it's embarrassing yeah. that that someone else has noticed it. Is that's the, that's the like the first time maybe someone else has noticed your weight gain, and it's like, oh my god, you, this is what I look like to you. This is, <laughs> yeah, like how dare you point yeah. this at me, right? Yeah. And then, like, I remember I'm with to see family for the holidays, and then like basically it was the exact same thing too. They kept pointing out like, oh my god, what happened? You gain weight? What happened? Right? Mm -hmm. And I'm just like. They kept chirping my shoulder. I kept like telling myself, like, um, you know, it comes a place of love, not a place of hate. I know it comes across as like it's gonna be a little rude and like, kind of fat shaming in the way, but then at the same time, I think because I kept rubbing their faces when I was to be skinny, and I'm like, I can eat a whole poutine without gaining weight. I can eat a large pizza without having to worry about anything. Now it's another story, but <laughs> yeah. So then my sister and myself decided to be accountable, accountable buddies, right? We used to be can't make yourself each other, each other accountable by working out. So buying this weird like home workout DVDs that we see, I used to do in my living room and 
I'm not sure why she needed hers, but like we used to make each other accountable. We used to push herself and like, you know, today we were going to do insanity. We're not going to follow Sean T. We're going to push yourself. Even though that means you're going to vomit when you push yourself too much. We're going to keep going. <laughs> it was, it was not fun. <laughs> How far did you get through it before you were like, you know what? Mute. <laughs> and then just, I watched it. I watched it. <laughs> My sister would do that. She's like, well, or she fast forward a part she could do. And then I'm like, I try, like I push myself to the point. Like sometimes I was on the ground for sweating so much. And like, I couldn't breathe. So I paused it. Cause I'm like, I need to do this workout no matter what. Like I can't miss five minutes of it. Like this pause needs to come off. Okay. And I remember like pushing myself so hard to the point. Like, yeah, like I puked. I had dinner before or lunch. And I puked it all up and I kept pushing myself until like, a week later when I reflected on this, I'm like, yeah, this is unhealthy. This is not a behavior I want to condemn people doing. This is not something I'm proud of. I should not push myself that much. Yeah. So did you so did you ever like did you find a workout that worked for you or did the insanity accountability between brother and sister work? Um, I basically give up and lie to her and said I kept doing it. <laughs> Um, but I confess, because, you know, like, I'm very honest, I'm very blunt, <laughs> and I just told her, like, I, I couldn't go bed anymore, I couldn't do it. So then I decided to invest into, like, my own gym equipment, because, um, like, you know, I don't, I, it's just, like, the confidence, like, I can't yeah. go to the gym and go see everyone working out, but, like, yeah, this is great. Yeah. I was just like, oh, God, how do you do this? This yeah. is a lot of weight. How do people handle this? This is hard. Yeah, yeah and it's <laughs> like you don't want to take up a space for somebody that's, like, super professional. It's like wanting to use the equipment you're on, and you're just sitting here, like, maybe doing it right, maybe not. <laughs> Having somebody just Jeez. stare at you while you work out, like, when you, let me know when you're finished. Okay, well, um, in inside I'm finished, like, but I still got two <laughs> more reps. Much. But yeah, I get that. It's a huge stab at your ego, right? Well, and that's one thing too about the gym is that people, you know, there's a lot of people with con- like like you with confidence that don't want to go work out with a bunch of people working out because it it gets distracting to see other people, yeah, do do things that you may never be able to do in your in your fitness journey whatsoever, and it just it just makes you feel like, what am I doing here? If this is where the this is where the level 10 guys are. I'm level one. Where can level one, where can I be in a room full of level one guys so I feel not as inadequate or just lost, you know, not have to spend $300 for a personal trainer to, to come it adds, up? It adds up. Yeah. And then, like, a buddy of mine told me too, he's just like, hey, like, if you can't go during peak time because you're too scared, why don't you go early in the morning? And I'm just like, are you fucking serious? Like, I have a hard time getting about seven o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Do you think I want to go like six o'clock or five o'clock in the morning? Like, no. <laughs> yeah. I think it's just you got to find a workout that works for you. Like, my dad and his husband, they go walking and they have, they're in a huge neighborhood. And to go through the whole neighborhood, it's like three to four miles. And so they just, every evening, they see. they go together and walk. And it's just something that they can do. It's not something super high intensity. They're kind of old anyways. But they don't want them doing super intensive. But it's something they do. And, you know, it's not something where it's repetitive. You're in a room just sitting on a stationary bike. You're out. There's distractions. There's things that distract you from the fact that you're just walking. You know, like if you're walking on a treadmill, yeah. I don't, I don't get it because I was like, how do you? I would have to put my treadmill right in front of my TV because it's like, why am I? You know, I'd have to have something to focus. I can't just walk in place in a room with no, you know, any kind of distraction or anything. Like people with a book, I'm like, how? Yeah, I seen it before too. Like, and I went to the YMCA with a friend of mine back in university. This chick was biking like super, super fast, and was reading at the same time. And I mean, while I'm like walking like this slow pace on a treadmill, trying to keep up, and like watching, I like, have a little TV in front of it, and I'm just like watching. I'm just like looking at her and watching the TV, and I'm like, "What the hell? Like, how can she do that?" But I was tripped, and I'm like, "Yeah, okay." <laughs> That's the last time I went there. <laughs> yeah. So do you, what exercises do you find work for you? Um, this is a hard thing because like I said too, I try to work it out in my living room. I bought gym equipment. I would do it for like 
consistently like four times a week um mm-hmm. to three times a week and then I got really busy and I miss a workout and then repeat and I do it for three months consistently and then I just stop because I get bored and then six months later I continue doing it but I find to me like dieting is just like I guess and I, I mean dieting is just like a fancy word but like eating healthy I should say is a lot easier yeah if you if you can if you can stop it at the source it's way easier than to than to basically you know just keep working on something that may or may not you know work you know or or that just gets you down or something like that because again you get that you get you get you know you get ups, you get guilty for eating pizza then for that guilt then you find it you you crave another snack food yeah it it, beco- yeah. it becomes a slippery slope and i feel like like you said, it's a journey. Like maybe, maybe you miss a day, maybe you miss a, a week because of you know, want to do. There's something you want to do, like travel, or a friend comes to town and you want to visit. You know, maximize your time, visit them, family, Christmas, holidays. You can't. You know, sometimes you're not always available just to keep that routine. And I think that's. I think a lot of people's problem with fitness is that it feels like there's this discipline that goes into it. I was like, no, it's not. I don't think it's a discipline. I think it's just the people that are there that are super fit just love. That's their that's their cross stitch. That's their, you know, their podcasting or, you know, their passion is just to do that. Yeah. So maybe your passion isn't to do that. But if you can find a healthier, you know, more physically straining way to do your passion, I think your passion's gardening. Maybe you do a lot more with by hand versus using any kind of tools or anything like that. Like you just, you you know, you take you know take lat you know water you know by hand. Don't just set up a hose system and sprinkle it. Maybe you just go out there and walk and spray. You know, then walk back and you know just turn everything else into kind of an exercise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I find to me like gardening is super rewarding because if mm-hmm. you can grow your own like veggies or fruits or whatever, it's just like, oh my God, look, I grew up this cabbage. This is amazing. Where I grew this lettuce. And then, like, especially right now, I don't know about, I don't know where else, but like in Canada, or, like in Ontario, where I live, like lately since the pandemic's been kind of lifted, it's just like, a thing of romaine lettuce is like 350 and I'm like for lettuce like 350 is a lot of money it used to be worth like two dollars before like two years ago like what do you mean 350 now and of course now people are just saying like oh but eating healthy is so expensive and it's like well can be the what my girlfriend works at Whole Foods and so they had an interesting quote is that Instead of wondering why it's so expensive to be healthy or questioning why it's so expensive to be healthy, why why don't you question why it's so cheap to be unhealthy? Why is why is unhealthy so cheap? If you, you know, and that's that I would that's the return serve of, you know, really yes, it's that's just an excuse. I mean, so you're saying yeah. for monetary reasons you're willing to die younger. Because you feel because it's affordable, you're willing to have health problems later. You're putting off, you know, the everything, you know, the any kind of issues you may have medically to be major issues because you're wanting to save money right now on the chicken nuggets and the hamburger and the Happy Meal. <laughs> because you don't you, if you don't know what kind of what goes into them, what you know, how much sodium or how much sugar, how much. Mm-hmm. how much your body mm-hmm. of that can't process what are you putting in there like to me you know cancer is n- not a, to me it's not a disease where it's a st- you know one stimulus i think it's a lot of things that we put that are put in our bodies that we don't know at the time the long term effects because you can't test all this stuff without you know, putting them on, you know, everybody wants to make money. So they put these things out there before they can get like a long term. You can't run a 20 year test on Saccharin before you use it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's where the problem comes in is that like things like Saccharin and things like that, that, that are, that are substitutes for natural things that like sugar, your body then's like, I don't know, I don't know what to do with this. And eventually I just think it, that's where the cellular, changes start to happen is this stuff you know it's just like it's just like you know dumping toxic waste it's you know it's great until one of the barrels cracks 
and then it just seep, you know, slowly seeps into everything else. Yeah. And then, like, you made a really good point, too, because nowadays it's just like, oh, like, if you're following some fancy, like, keto diet, for example, you can buy fat bomb. It's already made for you. But if you look at the ingredients, it's like there's like 20, 20 plus ingredients in this stuff. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's milk fat, there's canola oil, which canola oil, like, increases inflammation in your body. And then, you know, like, if you want to lose weight, you want to decrease inflammation, not increase it. Yeah. And over time, like, this increased inflammation builds up. And then, like, you pointed out, too, like, oh, you go see a doctor, like, what do you mean I'm at risk of cardiovascular? What do you mean I have, like, insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes? But eating healthy is too expensive. But I'll buy these, like, fancy protein bars on the shelf, which, like, I don't know what's in it, but I'll still eat it. I won't question what's in there because it's fine. Everybody else do it, yeah. right? Or the or the weight loss shakes, like, those things. yeah. Because you don't, I don't, you know, what is nutritional supplement? I, you know, yeah, maybe it satisfies all your nutritional needs, but what is, what is it using to satisfy them? If it's not using what I would say something that we're, our bodies are used to dealing with. Like I try not to use canned produce or anything. Like I'll buy fresh produce and things like that. And I cook for myself, you know, and I cook like four days a week and then I'll go out to eat, but I try not to eat fast food. I will have moments of breakdowns where I don't want to do dishes at three in the morning. So I will get a fast food thing <laughs> and I know I shouldn't eat right before I go to bed, but sometimes I am starving and I should, you know, I have tons of produce and everything else, but it's like, okay, I need to just get something quick, fast and, and then deal with it later on and just, and it's also just, again, finding, you know, physical routines that you enjoy versus things that you think you have, it's like homework. Yeah. How do you motivate, I guess, how do you motivate your clients to, to I guess, is it just through, do you start with nutrition and then you work your way through physical or? Yeah, because I have some clients who are very too physical, so I'm just like, if you can work out and you actually enjoy it, keep at it, right? Like keep doing you enjoy. If you don't enjoy working out, then you know what? You don't have to because to me, like weight loss is 80% diet, 20% working out, right? Mm -hmm. If you like you said, for example, like your folks who likes to go for a walk around the neighborhood, hey, that keeps you motivated, that keeps you happy, then go for it. Yeah. If it doesn't motivate you or you don't like it, then change something up. Do something that you like. Don't make yeah. yourself suffer. And they like they are a working partnership. Like, but my dad has been with the same man for my whole life. So it's kind of like they they have that unspoken. Like they know and they work with each other and stuff. Like my dad's husband was, uh, I guess, pre diabetic at one point. Like he was diagnosed as pre diabetic or something, and he changed his diet. Like he is, he he's one of those kind of guys that just is okay. I whatever you need me to do, I can do it. And he's basically reworked his diet to where he doesn't. You know, he has the 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 diet you know the gluten free crust or the wheat crust or something like that like that'd be their treat like they'll go to a pizza place and my dad will get regular crust and he'll get <laughs> he'll get the, the you know the gluten free crust or the sugar free whatever the diabetic you know substitute is and like he won't eat certain kinds of pasta like he won't be like semolina pasta or something that's not that's that's not grain or flour He's been, it's been really, it's been amazing. Like he's literally lost a lot of weight and it's amazing, you know, just to see when you are like that focused and, you know, this is and just make and just find things that work. And, you know, even, yeah. the, even though yeah. his favorite thing is lemon pie to find a way to, to, you know, to, to not just, you know, you, you maybe he will once in a while, but he rarely, you know, he rarely has that give in. Like he's like, I just can't have it, you know, or I, you know, I just, he, he just taints, he takes it out of his diet and he, it's just a testament. And I'm like, my goodness, you know, like I, I wish I had your willpower to be able to just, to turn all that <laughs> off because at some points, yeah, I want, I want my guilty pleasure. Me and my dad are the same. My dad's like, I want my guilty pleasure. I don't want, I want to enjoy eating, you know, like he, he does things that he enjoys and, you know, he is a smoker and I have. You know, I've gone to him as a kid and asked him if he would not smoke. And he he shot me down and said, that's something I enjoy that, you know, it's my it's my vice and I will I will continue to do it. You, I, I appreciate your concern, but that is my decision. And so I've 
I've kind of just been like, okay, you know, carpe diem then, you know, and just, you know, I love you and, you know, I support whatever decisions you make. You know, if you want to give up cigarettes, I would, you know, I'm totally on board with that. But if you don't, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit there and slap that out of your hand or, you know, be that, breathe that tension on it to, to try it. You know, there's, I'm not, all I'm doing then is to me, if I just keep fighting going, this is reinforcing that you do it. Like you're, that it now becomes, you know, a battle or, you know, something where we see or, you know, don't spend enough and more time together because of that kind of friction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I found like your dad's story remind you of mine as well. Cause it's like, when I quit smoking, I learned how to cook. Cause it was like, to me, it was like, the, you know, like I said earlier, that was like the very first stuff I had to do. I try working out and it's like, yeah, like I have my moments. Like now it's like it's spring in Canada. So like, I'd be more like wanting to go outside and get some vitamin D mm -hmm. or garden or you know, just stuff like that. I, like I enjoy, but like, I remember like when I quit smoking, I learned how to cook. And then I felt like shit, like a lot of times. And I went to see doctors, like walking clinics to see like trying to talk to some doctors to find out like what was wrong with me like why do I feel this way is there like some sort of test they can do to assess like you know someone can tell me what's wrong because I can work on it and try to fix it myself if I have to or if there's like I would just say like pills because I just don't like taking like prescription drugs but I mean like this what can I do right what can I do to make myself feel better and then every doctor was just like, yeah, there's nothing wrong with you. You're just a stress out student. Um, then I had brain, like I had um, internal parasites and the doctor just like, yeah, you have parasites, use this cream. I'm like, great, thanks. Why did you do this cream for? What is the cream going to do? To like, was it kill the parasites? I'm like, yeah, inter externally, but not internally, will it? And then so I, I tried to cream out for two weeks and I threw it out because I was like, this is useless. Um, that was like $30 for cream that, you know, costs money. Like, so like, shit like that adds up, right? And, and so then I went to see other fucking clinics, other doctors, and then it was the exact same thing, like the exact same broken story. I'm just like, this is super frustrating. One doctor basically yelled at me saying because he would not help me because I don't have a family physician that's assigned to me. And then I'm like, well, it's my choice. I don't have a family physician because I never go see one. Not because... I don't want to. It's just one of those, like, I feel every time I see one, they're like, here, take these drugs and yeah. take this and take that without telling you, like, why, mm -hmm. right? And Give me the whole so picture then, is what I would Yeah, think. exactly, like, right? So then I got super frustrated. And then I was like, well, I could see a naturopath, but it was also university. It's not like I had a lot of money because naturopaths to begin with, some cost like $300 just to do initial assessment with you. And I'm like, oh, this is a lie. So then I went to myself in the store. There was a nutritionist there. So I talked to him, picked his brains. And I'm like, yeah, like I feel this way. I quit smoking. I gained all this weight. I'm tired all the time. I have poor digestion. Like I pops, I am popping like Tums most like five times a day for like absolutely because I had, you know, poor digestion, had this heartburn feeling. Um, I have just like ringworm on me from parasites. The doctor told me about this cream. Like, what can you do? And then basically like i think i chatted with him for like an hour and my mind was blown just for someone i just met told me exactly like you know you could try this we can try that this is like what's happening you quit smoking but you're probably feeling like this this is what like, you know what i mean like, i'm like oh my god like this guy is a god saver like this yeah. is amazing yeah. and like went to see him for multiple sessions and then basically i feel like every time i talked to him was more like you know, I was pulling the weeds out of the garden, right? Like, I figured out why I felt this way. Why, why, what was happening to me? And then start working in mental health for years and seeing so many people, like, mentally ill people um, getting sicker every day over, like, not because, like, the medication, but about certain foods they were eating, certain things like, you know, the group homes that were looked at were just like, yeah, that's what they eat. They eat frozen pizzas and frozen chicken nuggets because that's what they buy. And I just got really frustrated. Um, and then I just looked up online and I'm like, maybe I should become a nutritionist. Maybe I should really educate people. Like maybe I can make a difference, right? Yeah. And here I am talking to you and talking to all of you. Mm -hmm. And then basically like your dad's story again, were reminding me also like, you know, when I gained all that weight, 
I was pre, like, I didn't feel like I was pretty diabetic. Um, I didn't feel like, like, you know, my dad's side, I feel these struggles with cardiovascular mm-hmm. disease and high blood pressure. So, like, I was definitely at risk on top of that, too. So, I think it was like most like I use that to my drive to me, like, remind myself every day, like, you know, your genes may load the guns, but your environmental factors pulls the trigger, right? So, if they can change my surroundings, they can change my diet, I could change my mindset, I could work on myself, I could reduce my risk of not having diabetes, I could reduce my risk of not having high blood pressure, I can work on myself and not feel like shit every day. Yeah. That's amazing. And I and I, I didn't even think about the quitting smoking facet of of your of your journey too, because yeah. all that is tr- it, your body is trying to get you to take a cigarette. And so all those some of those feelings probably come from you, from your body saying, Hey, how can I get you to get me a cigarette? <laughs> and it's just your body's not in, you know, maybe you had a higher metabolism. I don't know how smoking affects your metabolism, but maybe it did, you know, kind of keep the factory running at all hours, you know, so you didn't hold on to a lot of fat body fat. And I've, yeah. I find that was interesting too, is like in your body will hold fat, you know, because your poor eating habits, it doesn't know when you're going to eat again. So it's like, oh, store. And it's like, it, there's just habits of not just cooking, but just eating right. Like just eating timely, like and eating during the day when you're doing stuff or to do stuff before you eat so that you burn what they have versus what you just put in. There's all these little trinkets of, you know, things that, huh. You know, that, that like mental health, I'm sure, are fascinating. You know, that's just dietetically like this is how your body works. If your body, th- you know, will use what you're fir- what you just ate if you start exercising after you eat versus what you have stored if you do it early in the morning or when you first wake up before you have your breakfast. If you work out, then your body starts working more. You know, like it's mm-hmm. actually. It's our, you know, it's already up and running, and everything that you've had before is starting to get used, not just the food you just ate. Yeah, because this is just smoking too. Because smoking is just loaded with toxins and chemicals, and you know, it's one of those. It's like a protein bar you can buy at the grocery store. Yeah. You don't know what's in it. Um, in Canada, the FDA doesn't have to tell you exactly what are the ingredients of like household cleaning product, or if you buy, for example, um, some supplements again, they don't have to tell you what's in there. So some companies could say like, yeah, it's this, it's this and that. Meanwhile, they can add tons of other fillers and toxins and shit that you don't really know when you're taking it you're like yeah it is great it tastes really good <laughs> so what was your first meal that you learned how to cook what was the what was your first meal that you that you're on your journey that and do you still cook it uh, <laughs> i think the very first thing I made was pad thai because Asian food is like my go-to. It's like okay. my comfort food. So I learned how to make pad thai. Um, I made it for my partner and he tasted really good. I was super proud of myself. Like I made tofu for me and I made like some for chicken for him. He really liked it. He said it tasted really, really great. I made it for a friend of mine who came over, um, who's also not vegetarian. So I made some with chicken for him. And then like flitter wise is good, but the overall picture of it, which is like, this doesn't look so good. <laughs> what does not going to be any beauty contest? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I would not make it on chop. <laughs> yeah. My dad, my dad's the same way though. Like he cooks for people or he'll, he'll try to, he'll, he'll definitely, he loves to cook, but he loves to, you know, again, like you do, you know, what, what do you want? Like he, 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 he'll research some vegetarian, like my, my cousin, his niece is vegan. And so he will he whenever she comes over he'll he'll research vegan recipes to try. And Aww. it's he's just he's just super thoughtful and so you know that's one thing with cooking that I you know I never thought of is how 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 much love you can show or caring you can you can show by putting an effort into trying to make something specifically for somebody. Yeah. Yeah, because it's like every time now when I have a dinner party, like all my friends or whatever gets like, you know, my guests come over to like, oh my God, your food tastes so amazing. You always feel the love. And I always remind them, I'm like, 10 years ago, I don't know how to make this. 
this is not from watching YouTube, reading blogs, throwing things in a pot, and just like, I don't know, casting some magic spell, whatever you want to describe it, but it turned out great. And, you know, and it's like, yeah, like you said, too, right? You do taste the love. You do taste the effort and, mm-hmm. um, you know, everything you put in there. And it's just like, it's, you know, it's magic. Yeah. That's how I just describe it. But it's also, it comes from an honest partner, too. Like, your partner played a great role in actually giving you honest <laughs> feedback about the food rather than saying, oh, it's great, you know, and then it not be. <laughs> because then yeah. you're just put it you know he knows that if he says yes you're going to be cooking this like five days in a row <laughs> and how long is he going to be able to keep up that lie a major and favorite a, <laughs> and he's a tough critic because usually like when i eat something i'm like i really like it i'm like telling myself like oh like you know super grateful i made this food this is amazing this is so good mm-hmm. i'm like how do you feel about it oh yeah it is okay <laughs> And it, and it drives me nuts. And I keep pushing myself. I'm like, one day he's gonna taste. He's gonna say it tastes really good. I'm gonna get that credit that I want. I'm gonna get the credit that deserves. He's got. He's gonna. That, he, you ever seen Ratatouille? Yeah. He's yeah. gonna be that food critic at the end where he's got that. Where he has the Ratatouille and he just has the the whole like childhood reliving childhood. <laughs> I love it. But yeah, that's but that's great though. I mean, that's that's a good part. That's someone that like it's a, a great support system. That's that's willing to you know taste and also, I don't know. Does he cook for you sometimes too? Does he? Will he throw? Yeah, you no. Know, really, like how we do things is I'm the one who's known to cook healthier things. Like you know, mm-hmm. I'll make stir fry and then I'll use like coconut meals instead of soy sauce, yeah. or um, you know, like or I'll make like every day I make shish kebab with ground chicken for him and I use tempeh for me with like turmeric rice and then a salad on the side. If I ask him to cook, he usually make my favorite. We should make, he makes like the best mac and cheese ever. We've had I was like going to say that's probably why he rock <laughs> When you said he, you're healthier, I was like, yeah, he probably just rocks out a mac and cheese. And <laughs> and he makes it just cheese sauce from scratch, right? It has like four kind of cheeses in it. And it, it's so good. Like, you know, like I'm the one, I'm the one who cooks the healthy things. And if I want something unhealthy or some sort of call for food, mm-hmm. I ask them to cook, right? It's all about balance. That's how I see it. Yeah. I was gonna say maybe one day y'all could take a recipe and see who makes it better, just like do a a little contest. Cause <laughs> that was a podcast I had I with my girlfriend because she can cook really well and I'm I'm okay at cooking. I'm I'm again, I don't win beauty contests, but I can cook some really good food. And I was like, what if we just did a cooking contest where we just took a recipe and her let her child be like the blind taste test? I love that. And just we would just basically just do a weekly podcast of how are we change maybe we we tweak the 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 recipe. Here's what I here's my tweak. Here's her tweak. And just kind of, you know, cause she I'm a spicy fan, she's not. And and so we have like these con- contrasting views on food, but we both like love food. And so it would be just, I just think it'd be really interesting to do a, like, that would be kind of a fun cooking podcast to compete, to see who, who wins. Yeah. I love that idea. But yeah, this is, this is a fantastic conversation. I'm glad. So how do when you, how do you feel about your body image now? Like this is, are you, are you where you want to be or are you somewhere in between and happy or um, I feel like since, like, you know, after talking to the nutritionist and then learning so much about what was going on with me and then working on myself for like, you know, for so long, like I read so many like self-help guides, like for my mental health, um, listening to so many podcasts and like being inspired by so many people. And then basically like, you know, I decided to become a nutritionist myself and continue to work on myself. And now I gladly can say that. My body image has like been a lot better. Mm-hmm. Um, like I have my like, moments on days like when I go to the beach. If I see some guy beside me like super rip and buff, and I'm like, yeah, like you know, I won't feel so good about my body image. But <laughs> I figure we see someone who's kind of like you know myself, like a little average, and I'm like, yeah, like you know what, this is fine. If he can take his top off and rock himself in his speedo, so can I. Maybe not the speedo part, but so can I. I can take my top off. No one cares. No one's going to judge you. Yeah. And also people, when people, I see it with people with abs and stuff, it's like, you don't know how much nutrition and just diet discipline goes into that. Yeah. Like it is, <laughs> it is frequent exercise, court cardio, and just almost low key starving yourself. 
Yeah, which I'm like, oh god, yeah. I'm all bad at the kid. It's like because <laughs> back at I, you know, I was like, maybe I can get abs, and I read an article, and it was like this nutrition plan. It was like a cup of brown rice here with three veggies. And, you know, you had to eat like seven or eight times a day, and it was just really small portions. I was like, oh, we're never gonna have abs. <laughs> <It's> like. <laughs> But a lot of times, too, I think I blame the media for that as well, right? Because if you watch, like, I'm a huge Marvel fan, so if mm-hmm. you watch, like, The Avengers, you're like, oh, my God, Captain America looks super rip, and Thor, and, like, Iron Man, and, like, oh, like, you know, they all look super amazing. And if you watch, like, or um, if you're in magazines, if you know, you, you know yourself is Photoshop, so you keep yeah. convincing yourself, like, this is so fake. You look at Men's Health magazine, it's like, how to have abs, diet to burn fat, fat burning food. It's like it's always in your face and it's disgusting. It's like, oh fuck, I feel so vulnerable. Like, leave me alone. Yeah. And it's just it, it I think if you ha- it's the to me, body image, you know, is is important, but at the same time, you also just kind of learn, you know, this is you, and that maybe, you know, as long as you're in a happy place, like and it, you kind of you can kind of tune out the noise. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. you've got again, you've got a partner that loves you for who you are, you know, and I always say love adds like ten pounds to a, anybody because you just yeah you just are so comfortable with each other that you don't it doesn't it, you don't worry about what you look like with your shirt off. It, they you know they've seen you with your shirt off and it's you've seen them with their shirt off and it yeah <laughs> seen at your best and he's seen at your worst yeah. But that's also. <laughs> This has been a fantastic conversation, Alan. Where can people find you on social media if they wanted to learn more about nutrition? And yeah, so I have an Instagram account. They can follow me as well. Like you know, I post tons of stuff there. It's Nutra and U T R A underscore Journey. Like the word Journey underscore Wellness. Mm-hmm. As well, I has like um on Facebook. If you look my full name up, so A L A I N and my last name C A R R I E R E. I do is like I do host master class as well for men in my Facebook group, and as well I do post some stuff that as well about things I'm passionate about, things I care, and like you know mindset, nutrition stuff as well. That's awesome. I and again, I feel like so much weight loss it you know doesn't doesn't address the mental health part of it just the just the coping and to be the patience to say hey you know it may not be great now but just just wait just just keep at it and let's keep at it and see what we get in six months you know let's look at the look at the scale in the mirror then right because i find it's just like you have to push yourself beyond your comfort zone if you want to see progress, if you want yeah. to see growth. If you do the same thing over and over again, you know, that's like the definition of insanity, right? Like you're not going to see the results. You're not going to grow. You're going to continue being miserable. And then you're going to continue thinking that no one it wants to help you. The world is against you. And then you're basically going to become a hermit crab. You're going to hide in your shell and never come out. Yes. Well, thanks so much, Alan. We have a great yeah, day. No problem. You as well. Thank you so much. So that was Alan. I thoroughly enjoyed that conversation. We had a really fun time. It was a very interesting fear. It was a fear that while it is not a, you know, it's not, it's, it's a fun fear that you can make fun as a fear you can make light of, but also, you know, be you know, have make light of it's serious, but at the same time, you can kind of make light and poke fun at it. And I love when you can have that with your fear that you can have these fun conversations like we're having on this podcast. Check out Alan on Instagram at Nutra underscore journey underscore wellness. You can also find him on Facebook as well as his website, NutraJourney.ca. I'll have those links in the show notes. Uh, as for myself, I work with April Macy. It was an amazing weekend. We had a great time, great shows, uh, ready for Memorial Day holiday to just kind of relax and unwind for a little bit. So looking forward to that. Got a couple shows in June. Not much else going on. I'm in the finals for a comedy contest that will be on Tuesday. And so I will work on that. But make sure you follow Alan and... If you want to follow me, you can. I'll have my links in the show notes as well. Thanks again for listening to the Sum of All Fears podcast. I am doing this in the early morning so I can get ready to go to a wine tasting here with Mallory. 
So we'll do that and we'll have a fun Memorial Day weekend. Hope you guys have a great Memorial Day holiday and thanks thanks you to all the troops and armed forces veterans out there. We've had some on the podcast like Mario and MJ Moody. Thank you guys for your service uh, and the people that gave their lives so that we could live the life we do. Thanks again for listening to the Some of All Fears podcast. Have a wonderful week. And now some thank yous for the folks that make this show possible. Thanks to Barry Whitewater for my art and graphics. You can follow him on Instagram at bwhiteh2o. Get it? H2O like water. You can also follow him on Facebook. Music. A huge thank you to Gunnar Olson for the wonderful music provided for this podcast. You can follow him on Instagram at gunbuns. That's G-U-N-B-U-N-S. As well as his website, GunnarOlson.net. Check out some of the samples that he has recorded. They're amazing. He's an amazing percussionist. If you want to follow the show, we've got a Facebook group, Some of All Fears. Instagram, Twitter, you can find us at Some Fear Fans. If you have some feedback for the show, email me at Some Fear Fans, S O M E F E A R F A N S, at gmail.com. I'll be happy to, to take those into consideration. Also, if you'd like to be a guest, email me at somefearfans at gmail.com. We can try to iron out some details and get that settled in. You know, give us some feedback if on Apple, Google, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Leave a review. It makes the show bigger, and it's not going anywhere. I'm going to record as many shows as I possibly can. If you want to follow me, on social media, I am at Ryan Perio. It's R Y A N P E R R I O on all social media platforms. You can follow me there and you can check me out at ryanperio.com, my website. I'll try to list upcoming shows there as well. It's been kind of spotty because as soon as I set it up, that's when the pandemic happened and everything's kind of just in a, in a holding pattern. Thanks again for listening to the Sum of All Fears podcast. Next week, we'll have another guest with another fear. Thanks for listening. (laughs) 